Are you looking for a quick ML project you can tackle in just 15 minutes? Welcome to Data Detectives. Up next, we'll dive into a machine learning problem statement and get started right away. Let's begin. Hello and welcome to Data Detectives. Today we are going to see a machine learning project in 15 minutes related to dynamic pricing prediction. Here we will be using the features of cab sharing company and using the different features or columns available from the data set we will be applying a machine learning model that will be random forest and using random forest we will try to predict the dynamic pricing based on the features we will be predicting the dynamic pricing of the rights it can be possible that there can be multiple features that will be influencing the pricing of the rights. It can be the duration. It can be the location. It can be cab type and so on. So we will be using multiple features that are available and using that we will be predicting the pricing for our cabs using the machine learning algorithm. Okay. So let's go to Jupyter notebook. So firstly, we will be importing the libraries that are required. So we will be importing the NumPy. We will be importing the Pandas library. We will be importing Seaborn library. And we will be importing the Matplotlib library. <coughs> okay. Once the libraries is imported, we will be importing the data. So the data is available in the link which is in the description below you can go and download that data and you can work around this notebook so we will be importing our data using the read csv method and <coughs> that will be dynamic pricing dot csv if you want to see the data let's see what are the features available we have number of riders we have number of drivers then we have the location category then we have the customer loyalty status we have the number of pass rights then we have the average rating of the rights we have the time of booking then we have the vehicle type then we have the expected ride duration and then we have the historical cost of ride so this is my target column that is historical cost of ride that is we are trying to predict the cost of the rights or the pricing of the rights okay so to start with the basic eda and data analysis or data transformation first and the foremost thing that we will see is whether there is any null values available or not so for that we will be using is null function and we will check whether there are any null values available or not definitely there are no null values if you want to see the info as well we can see the info there are thousand rows available and these are the data types these are the columns so this is the complete data set there is no data cleaning or transformation needed here okay <clears throat> the first thing that we will see the statistical information about our numerical columns so we will be using ds dot describe method and we will see what is the mean median and the averages available so we can see the average cost of rise is 372 the expected ride durations is 99 minutes these are the average ratings that is 4.2 then we have number of pass rides which is approximately 50 number of riders is approximately 27 and number of riders are approximately 60 okay so these are the basic uh, statistical information that we can derive from our data set next thing that we will see is the eda that is <clears throat> how my columns how my features are related to my target column that is historical cost of right since we are doing this machine learning model to a specific problem statement that is we are trying to predict the dynamic pricing we will focus on that only that part of eda that will help us to understand the problem so we will be doing or we will be trying to see the relation of all our columns uh, which are some object types and which are some integer types to our historical cost of right okay so if you see this historical cost of right is a float data type the uh, expected ride duration is integer and vehicle type type of booking is object types and then we have some integer and object types so 
usually you can see that there are two types of data types available one is integer based and one is categorical based we will be creating a function so that in one go we can see all the relationships with our target column so we will define a function that will be eda and this dead function will will be ex expecting two arguments one will be the data frame and one will be our column that we will be providing so if df column dot d type is object like if it is a categorical column then what we will be doing is we will be creating a box plot of it so we will write sns dot box plot and here we will write data is equals to df <coughs> x is equals to column and y will be my target column that is historical historical cost of right okay that should be capital c so this will be first box plot and if <coughs> the data type of the column is anything else except the object data type then we will be creating a scatter plot so we will write sns dot scatter plot and the data or the arguments will be exactly same so i will copy that and paste here okay now we will be executing for each and every column so we will write for column in df dot columns we will be running a loop and then we will write or we will use this function we will call this function with data will be df and column will be column from the loop so when we will execute this you will see all the plots being created now you can explore you can see what kind of relationships we see for each and every column so first of all if you see uh, the number of riders with historical cost of ride definitely we don't see any kind of relationship it's a completely scatter plot there is no kind of relationship or no kind of trend we see then if we see for number of drivers and historical cost of ride definitely we see that there is uh, with less number of drivers there are so many data points in the starting but again there is no trend uh, we can see if we check about location category where we will be having urban location we have suburban location and then we have rural location according to that also the box plot are very similar to each other that is this feature is not also not affecting the historical cost of right if you go on and see the customer loyalty status then silver regular and gold definitely the cost of right is little bit slyer the uh, the cost of right is cost of right is little bit higher for the gold customers uh, you can see the box plot is little bit higher but again it's more or less similar and then if you ch check for uh, number of pass rights again it is there is no trend if you see for average ratings again there is no trend that we can see if you talk about time of booking we have night evening afternoon and morning in afternoon we definitely see a little bit higher rate and in the morning a little bit higher rate for cost of ride in comparison to evening and night if we check for vehicle type definitely in vehicle type we can see that the premium cars is charging most cost of ride like the rides cost are higher for the premium cars in comparison to economy the box plot is clearly showing that and now if you see the last column that is uh, expected ride duration that is on the basis of ride, duration of the ride you can see the cost of ride is directly linearly increasing that is as your ride duration is increasing your cost of ride is definitely increasing it means that there is definitely a clear positive relationship between the ride duration and the cost of ride just to confirm this what we can do is we can create a heat map for our correlation matrix so first we will write df dot corr and here we will want to take only numerical columns so we'll write numeric is equals to true so this is the correlation matrix and if we want to see the heat map we will write sns dot heat map and then inside the bracket we will mention a node equals to true so when we will close this you can see that this is the heat map that is representing the correlation among the columns with our historical cost of right and definitely we can see that there is a positive correlation between 
historical cost of write and expected write duration which is 0.93 so now we will be trying to create a model but before that we will have to do some feature engineering because there are some categorical columns we will convert them into numerical ones by using dummy variables and also we will be scaling our feature so that everything will be on the same scale so before that we will be separating our x and y values that is x will be df dot drop and here my column will be historical historical cost of right and axis will be equals to one and y feature will be df historical cost of right okay so that will be my target column okay now what we will be doing is we will be creating some dummy variables that is x new which will give us pd dot get dummies and what we will do is x comma drop first equals to true so what this will give us it will give us some dummy variables <clears throat> so you can see that if i show you x new this is my new column or this is my new data frame or this is my new input where we have all the features in the numerical values now what we will be doing is we will be using this x new and we will be creating the scaled version of this so that everything will be on the same scale so for that we will be first importing our library so we will write from sklearn dot pre processing import i'm using standard scalar you can use min max scalar also standard scalar scalar equals to standard scalar i am creating an object of this and now once an object is created i will be converting my inputs that will be x scale using this object scalar dot fit underscore transform and here we will give x new so if you see my x scale this will be the <coughs> this will be the scale version of my inputs now once the scaling has been done now i will do the train test split so we will write from sk learn dot model underscore selection import train test split okay and then we will split our values we will write x train comma x test comma y train comma y test and we will be using the train test plate here we will give x scale version y input then test size we will make it to 0 0.2 that is 20 percent and random state we will keep any value let's take 101 okay now we got our x train x test y train and y test now we will train our model so for that first we will import the function from the library sklearn dot ensemble import random forest regressor we are applying the random forest algorithm so i am importing that that is model equals to random for forest regressor and now on this object i will be fitting my data that is x underscore train comma y underscore train and we will run this so you can see that the model has been trained now we will be making some predictions so we can make predictions here and we can also calculate <coughs> evaluate the errors so we will write y pred equals to model dot predict x underscore text because we are predicting for our testing data then we will calculate the msc for it so we will write from sk learn dot metrics import mean squared error okay and then 
we will be calculating our mean squared error that is msc equals to mean squared error on our y test and y predictions and simultaneously we will be calculating the mean absolute percentage error mean absolute percentage error here we will give y test comma y pred and if you see <coughs> what is my msc value so msc comes as 5136 and if i talk about map which is 0 0.14 now to see which feature has the most importance for model training we can see the uh, importance of the different features we will write feature underscore importance is equals to model dot feature importances and we will also create a data frame for it so we will be writing x underscore new dot columns and then we will create a df that is imp df and that will be pd dot data frame and here we will pass our feature which will be <coughs> feature only and also we will pass here feature importances like what is the importance of it so we will pass feature importance and this will create a data frame if you want to see this is the data frame and if you want to sort the values like if i sort the values to see the most important feature sort underscore values and here we will sort our data based on our importance and we will write ascending equals to <coughs> false and you can see that expected write duration has the highest positive correlation or the feature importance which is 0 0.88 and this is the same that we were expecting and if you want to plot a chart for it we can plot a horizontal bar plot we will write plt dot bar horizontal and here we will pass our imp underscore df <coughs> And here we will take feature, then we will take imp underscore df, and here we will take importance, and we can choose any color. Let's choose sky blue. Okay, and when we will execute this, you can see that expected write duration has the highest value for feature importance so now as our model has been created you can predict the values and you will get your dynamic pricing based on the random data that you give to this model i hope we are able to cover this topic in 15 minutes thank you